Grand Elevation, everyone. Francesca Abbey here. Welcome to my darts channel, Dynamic Artist Renaissance Tour of uh, T Socials, not Tourism Service, T Socials. And uh, yes, I have on clothes here. I just got to pull the top up a little bit. Yeah, um, I'm attempting to do this live. And I'm um, still working on my market scene, which I've been corrected as a C shop um, paint and sip. But today I'm not painting. I'm actually using a pencil because I'm uh, just kind of penciling in fish. I'm using a pencil so that I can erase because I've actually never painted fish before. So I'm using a pencil to pencil in the fish. But you can see, well, let me just move this a little bit. So you can see how far I've gotten with this um, market scene. See, I keep calling it a market scene, but it's actually C shop. I'm going to get used to saying it correctly. C shop, not market scene, C shop. So there you can see. And uh, I started coloring in some of the people already. Um, I used marker for some of these folks, and I see when it dries, they the people look kind of gray. It dries very light. So, and the reason why I use marker is because I'm a chicken. <laughs> you know, I'm my paint brushes are not fine enough to really get in there. You know, to um, get all these small, small this man's arm, the man in the fishing boat to get these small areas painted right. But I'm gonna have to try my best to do it because the mirror is not working for me. And I've been told that my paintings are, are too pastel. I need to use more bold colors. And you know, so what we have here, this is a C shop. You know, anybody that knows me knows how much I love the beach. So I've said it time and time again, so um, when I was looking for a reference photo online for my market scene, I ran across this. Well, not this, but something similar to this um, on the beach. And I'm like, oh, market on the beach. How nice. So I just kind of added my own flavor to it and added my own kind of elements to it. And uh so what we have, here's the market woman. She's actually the one selling her wares. And what it looks like she's selling here is supposed to be avocados. Um, in the US, we call it avocados. Here in Ghana, they call it pear. And strangely enough, my mom used to call it avocado pear. And, and I loved it. And she used to buy them when I was a little girl. I loved avocado pear. And these are going to be peppers. I'm going to have to really do some research of, of some reference photos to see how to draw peppers correctly. Um, and these are cassava yams. These are tomatoes. Uh, the small, like, um, plum tomatoes. And these are cabbages. And this is going to be a palm tree. These are coconuts. I didn't like the way the coconuts came out, so I'm going to have to doctor them up a little bit. This is a lady. She's got on some shorts. She's got a baby wrapped around her back, and she's got a basket of something on her head. I haven't decided what she's selling yet. Or, you know. And uh, this is going to be a person in the water swimming. Right now, it looks like an, uh, an airplane <laughs> that fell in the water. But it's actually a person that's going to be in the water swimming. And I will doctor that up as well. These are two ladies talking. This is an older lady. And this is a younger lady with a baby attached to her back. A little bit older baby. You can see his little feet hanging. And these are two lovers on the beach sitting on a blanket together. And uh, this is the fishing boat here. Fishing boat. And uh, the man selling fish. There's actually, you probably can't really see the detail. I just penciled it in a little bit. There's a basket in the boat where the man is actually catching the fish and putting them in the basket. Uh, I haven't even drawn the net that he's using to catch the fish yet, but I will. And there's a um, 
his brother here is actually selling the fish that this man in the boat has caught. And he's got the basket on his head. And this is what I'm painting. I'm going to be painting the fish in this basket on the boat and the fish in the net at some point. I probably won't do the net today. I have to do a reference photo for that too. And the man carrying the fish on his head to sell. We're just walking along the beach shore, you know. So there's a lot more details I'm gonna add clouds in there, just a little little wispy clouds, not anything big and drastic looking. Nobody wants to see clouds on the beach, you know, like um rain clouds, thunder clouds. You don't want to see that on the beach. It's run for your lives, you know. You don't want to get rained on while you're on the beach enjoying everything. So that's my beach scene. I really, really wanted to talk to you guys while I'm, while I'm painting. I know I, I um, put up a video earlier, some shorts, actually, I did some shorts um, with my phone because I didn't have data on my laptop, but I actually went out today and, and was able to um, get my unlimited internet data running. What is going on with my head, this little thing here? So, um, yeah, so now I'm back, you know, doing this, and I just figured I'd give it a try and try to go live with you guys. And um, I know that I didn't give any fair warning that I was going to go live because I wasn't sure if it was even going to work. And I didn't want to... Um, disappoint you a second time because I know I promised a dynamic birthday video for January 29th and everything you could think of in, including Murphy's Law went wrong. I didn't have no internet. I didn't have money. I didn't have food. I didn't have nothing. So I could not have my party the way I wanted to. And so I didn't want to disappoint you again by telling you, yeah, we're going live at 5.30 p.m. And then it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> I didn't want that to happen. So, but this is, uh, this is my first little attempt. Now that I know that I can go live, it's on and popping now, baby. You know, I will definitely give you fair warning and I'm going to be doing more and more videos, um, you know, because I really, really need to keep the, well, I don't want to say keep the pressure on, but, you know, I really want to keep myself in the public eye, keep my channel in the public eye. And uh, so that my subscribers and would be subscribers will know that they can definitely count on new videos popping up every couple of days or so. So, and that's the that's best I can do for now. You know, um, I can't say that I can put up videos every single day, you know, but every couple of days is good. So let me put on my glasses. I know you don't think I wear glasses. These are, well, actually I do wear glasses occasionally, not very often. I probably should wear them more often, but these are not my regular glasses. These are just a pair of reading glasses that I have so that I can actually see the details that I'm uh, drawing on, on the uh, canvas there. Uh, so yeah, look okay? Still me. <laughs> okay, so drawing, uh, let me see if I can get this makeshift. I'm so poor, but <laughs> I shouldn't say that. That's not a good thing to say, but you know, this makeshift um, easel, made out of cardboard and my makeshift, actually this is also cardboard, but this is, um, um, what do you call it? Um, this is paper, uh, canvas paper that I bought and I should have actually bought canvas board and I don't know why I bought canvas paper, maybe because it was less expensive and I didn't have enough money to get canvas boards you know, because I like to paint. And I want to be able to paint a lot. And so the sheets of paper, I think you get like 20 or 30 sheets of paper with the canvas paper and canvas board. You get one board, maybe. 
I don't know, maybe three boards or something. But when I get more money, when I'm able to get more subscribers and get monetized and have more money to put back into the, the channel, then I'll be able to get, you know, um, better art supplies and, you know, really, and, and even better uh, YouTube uh, equipment better camera instead of like right now I'm using my laptop, but you know, a nice camera with a tripod and microphone that is attached to me so that, you know, I can walk around and talk to you or whatever. So anyway, let me get to painting and uh, well, drawing, I should say. Yes. So uh, the video I, I shot earlier today when I had on the yellow dress, the yellow romper dress, uh, it was basically, oh, I forgot to tell you this. So you know what I'm painting today, my market, my sea shop market scene. But I didn't tell you what I'm sipping today. What I'm sipping today is grape juice. I put it in a bottle so that, you know, in case I knock it over, at least it's got a cap on it. It won't spill all over the place. So I'm sipping some grape juice today. And I mean, it's not a painting sip if you don't have something to sip, right? <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you. Oh, in the earlier video that I shot, the short little video when I was in the car, during the car chronicles i was talking about fuel prices and food prices here in ghana the price has gone bananas the prices have gone bananas and i mean you know it's like a, a domino effect because when the food price when the fuel prices go up so do the food prices you know, and uh, because the trucks that bring the food to the store have to pay for fuel. And I get that, you know, but somehow, like, you know, down the road, the um, extra costs, extra expenses passed down to, to the consumers, you know, and already money is tight for everyone, not just me but for everyone and it's, it's getting harder. Um, I don't know why fuel prices went up. When we stopped to get um, petrol, which we call gas for the car, and Quasi asked the, the lady that was pumping the petrol, why did the fuel prices go up? She told him, ask your president. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Well, but, but she's right. I can't, I can't argue with that. She don't know. She don't have no control over that. She just works there, you know. She said, ask your president why the prices went up. Some of this fish I'm going to have spilling out of the basket. Oh, well, maybe it's dropping. I don't want to have it dropping on the ground, but yeah, we'll do a little of that. And some of them sticking out of the basket. Uh, you probably, I, I don't think you can see what I'm actually doing, but it's okay. You'll see the finishing results because what I'll do, um, like I've done with even with the tomatoes here, you can see the tomatoes. I've tried to make them pop a little bit by going around them with a, a ink pen. Yeah, going around the outline of the tomatoes with an ink pen just to try to make the colors pop a little bit better. But yeah, so fuel prices, food prices, everything has gone up here. And I don't know how many people, you know, are on you know watching my channel from other countries i'd like to hear from you if possible what your fuel and food prices are doing if it's also going up you know no matter where you are i want to hear from you 
because I, I, I don't know if it's just the U.S., and Ghana, or is it everywhere? And if so, why? Why would that happen? I don't, I don't understand that at all. I really don't understand that. So let me see. Uh, I did this wrong. Okay, I want I want this fish to go this way. Fish tails. And some. Please don't ask me what kind of fish these are. They they just fish. Okay, <laughs> it's fish. You know, uh, that's they're not red fish, blue fish, one fish, two fish. They just fish. You know, and um, the reason why I've I've not done anything with the clothes on the people in the market. Well, just, you know, I put some blue shorts on this gentleman and some purple swimming trunks on this gentleman and a pink swimsuit on this lady, pink and purple. And I did a pink and purple um, piece of fabric, nice fabric that uh, she's wrapped the baby on her with. But other than that, I haven't done the clothing, because that's going to be extensive. I want to do African fabrics, you know, African textiles on them. And, you know, really, really bright, bold colors. Like I said, I really want to make these colors pop nicely. So, you know, I'm taking my time just doing what I can. Like I said, I did the background, the sky. I did the ocean. I did the sand. And, you know, some of the vegetables, I haven't worked on the peppers yet. But, you know, I'm getting as much done as possible. So uh, when I'm ready to start working on the textiles, then, you know, I'll, that's all I'll have to do. I'll just work on the bigger ones first and then, you know, start working on the smaller ones. So, yeah, um, I'm interested in hearing from you and knowing how, how you plan to, um, to alleviate the situation if where you are, if the prices of fuel and food have gone up as well, how are you going to tighten your belt or budget your income to alleviate some of the pain at the cash register or at the fuel at the uh, fuel pump, um, let me know. Put it in the chat section. You're allowed to chat if you like. Oh yes, okay. Hi Vasa nine five four one nine. I I didn't see you right away. Welcome. Thank you for coming on my channel. Um, yeah, I'm using acrylic paints, uh, and um, actually, I'm always doing like mixed media. So you know, this the background, the sky, and the sea, and the sand is all done with acrylic paint. And um, I think I did the avocados pairs, avocado pairs here with markers. And I also did acrylic paint uh, for the cassava yam and the tomatoes I did with markers. And so I did the um, cabbage. I don't know if you can see the cabbage. I did the cabbage with markers as well. And the tree, the palm tree, that's going to be coconut palm tree. I'm still working on it. I did the tree trunk with uh, acrylic paint. And um, working on this lady's uh, skin tone with acrylic paint as well. But uh, the skin tones of these other people, I actually did with markers. And I'm not really liking the way the markers, when they dry, they dry so light. I'm going to probably tomorrow, I'm going to try to just go over the skin tones again and see if they uh, will um, actually be more colorful instead of grayish looking. To me, they look grayish looking, I don't know why. But if not, then I'm gonna have to really, really find a really fine, fine tune paintbrush and just do the best that I can to stay within the lines, 
Yes, thank you for your question. I really appreciate your participation and your questions. Um, I don't know if you're a subscriber of mine or not. I hope you will subscribe and share. I'm going to be doing much, much more of these paint and sips. Um, in fact, let me just sip. I've been talking. I ain't been sipping. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, Vasa, 95419, I started these paint and sips because I really, oh, wonderful. Oh, thank you for the compliment that my painting is looking great. Thank you. And you are a subscriber. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm glad that you're a subscriber. I appreciate you. Welcome you. Um, I started these paint and sips because... I've never actually been to a paint and sip before. You know, always wanted to go, you know, I'm from the US um, and I repatriated here to Ghana in um, October of 2021. And, uh, but you know, it's like, I just started hearing about paint and sips back in like 2018, 2019. You know, I've been living under a rock, no doubt. And, um, I was like, wow, that sounds like fun. You know, that sounds like a lot of fun. I like to paint and I like to sip. So, you know, why not combine? And I like to party. I like the music. I like people, you know, the whole party atmosphere and everything. I'm a party animal anyway. But um, I never got invited to a paint and sip. And so I said, well, now that we we're not technically locked down here in Ghana, but there's a lot of places that are closed to you know people, and there's just nothing happening right now. So I said, well, what if I just since I can't go to a paint and sip, and since I can't actually create a live paint and sip where I can invite people to come and paint and sip with me. I'll do it on my channel, on my DARTS channel. And DARTS stands for, it was standing for Diaspora and African Repatriation Tourism Service, but I rebranded DARTS um, to say Dynamic Artist Renaissance Tea Socials. And the tea socials, well, you know, you basically sip, you know, you sip tea. Uh, I don't think, did I have tea? I think of one of my videos, I did have some tea. I sipped some tea, not in a teacup. I put everything in one of these little plastic bottles because I am clumsy. I could be reaching for paint and knock everything over, you know? And uh, once it spills, that's it. So I put everything in a bottle with a cap on it. So even if I knock it over, it won't spill everywhere. But yeah, so I said, well, well, I don't have music on here. I'm not going to put music on um, because basically having a conversation, you know, uh, talking about whatever. Right now we're talking about food prices. So let me ask you, Vasa95419, where are you from, dear? Where are you from? And what are the food prices and fuel prices like? where you are living currently and also how are you um going to be able to alleviate the pain at the pump and at the cash register um or how have you been managing you know how do you intend to manage going forward you know if the, especially if prices go up even higher so let me know in the chat and I'm going to pick up my pencil and do paint some more, uh, draw some more fish while I wait to hear back from you. Uh, you know, I'm not a stranger to painting, but I haven't been painting for a long time. I started painting when I was a teenager. I was about 15, 16 years old. I started painting. Um, I don't know how old you are, Vasa, 95419. Um, I'm 67. I So, you know, I started painting. I was painting a long time. And what I used to paint back then, 
was um, the reason why I was asking you how old you are. Well, you don't have to tell me, you know, because you may not want that publicized. But back in the 1970s, you know, when I was a teenager, we had these things where we would um, have these black velvet canvas with um, a painting of black woman, black man, black baby, whatever. And on this <clears throat> canvas, painted on the canvas. And the paint that they used was glow in the dark paint. And wow, when they put on the black light, I don't know if you're familiar with the black light, maybe all of this may be before your time, but they had a black light. It looks purple, but when you turn it on and it's dark in the room, everything, that's like um, neon colored or everything that's white is like bright, bright electric white, electric colors, you know, and colors really, really pop. And those pictures, if you had those posters hanging on the wall, the black velvet canvas with the paintings uh, of uh, these neon colors, oh man, it, it just made the atmosphere. It was like uh, back in the day, the term was psychedelic you know, had a psychedelic atmosphere. Okay, you're in the US, prices are definitely creeping up, coping by buying more in bulk, more healthy food prep, less eating out. The pandemic is less moving around, so I'm feeling the gas more with food. I, un I feel you there, I understand that, that's good. That's good, you're coping by buying more in bulk, yes, indeed and uh, buying more healthy food food prep. Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. You know what, um, Vasa, I, that sounds so cool, psychedelic groovy. <laughs> okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Yes, yeah, so um, back about two years ago before I came to Ghana, I just, it seems like the my ancestors, were they knew that this was going to happen so they started preparing me where i just start started eating once a day i was like 200 pounds i was a, a chubby ubby you know as some people would say fluffy but uh i just stopped eating stopped buying snacks and stopped eating rice and pasta and just really started juicing and, and buying just, just only raw vegetables, mostly raw vegetables, occasional, some, some grains. Occasionally I would buy some grains and actually cook them, but I was mostly juicing and just eating raw salads. And um, once a day, one meal a day, one small, small meal, the size that you would fit in a baby's bowl, you know, and that would be it. That's that's all. I've no salad dressing, and you know I sacrificed a lot, and it was twofold because I, of course I wanted to get rid of the extra pounds, but the other reason is because I needed to save money so I can get to Ghana, you know, and because you know I wasn't rich woman, you know I'm still not a rich woman. I don't have that much money, so to save money I just cut down on a lot of stuff, and I was able to make you know, get my plane ticket, my visa and everything, get it done, get my suitcases on the plane and get it done. But um, yeah, I've come down considerably. Uh, a year, I started a year before I left the US and I was about 200 pounds. And um, then by the time I was ready to leave to come, to Ghana, I was 185. And so I arrived in Ghana at 185. And then, you know, of course, you're asking me how, how I've uh, been eating in Ghana. Man, I went bananas because I love Ghanaian food. Oh, I was eating Ghanaian food when I was in the US, you know, uh, prior to coming. But mm, 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 mm. it doesn't taste the same in the US as it does in Ghana. In Ghana, the Ghana food, food tastes like food in Ghana. Actually, fruits and vegetables actually have real seeds in them where now the GMOs in the US, you don't see any seeds anymore. They, they like they cloning food in the laboratory.
Tori. It's got no seeds and no soul, you know. Um, but yeah, since I've been in Ghana, well, my first couple of months in Ghana, I was bugging out, eating everything that I could catch that couldn't run fast, you know, because <laughs> I wanted to taste the local foods, you know. Anytime I've gone on vacation in the Caribbean in the past, I've wanted to, first thing I wanted to do is taste the local cuisine. And, you know, I'm like, well, I like Ghana food. But I stopped. I stopped, put the brakes on that, eating like a wild animal and, you know, just cut down on a lot. And I'm back, I'm still eating once a day. I've always been eating once a day since I've been here, one small meal a day. But, um, you know, sometimes it's local food, sometimes it's a salad, sometimes it's, you know, just whatever I can afford to cook, you know, mostly rice and beans, <laughs> beans and rice the next day, rice and beans the day after. <laughs> um, I really don't want to eat all of that rice because for some reason it doesn't go well in my stomach. You know, it doesn't digest well. Um, I've tried the brown rice like several times and I like it when the restaurant cooks it, but when I cook it, something goes terribly wrong. Something, I, it either overcook or undercook and it just doesn't taste good. It doesn't, the after, something about the aftertaste just doesn't set well with me at all but I'm gonna keep trying. I got a big giant bag of brown rice, you know, to, you know, like you said, buy food in bulk. So um, yeah, I, that's just, you know, my backup plan. And I try to keep a lot of beans in the house, you know, cow peas, um, uh, black eyed peas. So that's basically the only kind of beans I've found. I like red beans. I like white lima beans. I, I like beans. Some beans, most beans. Um, I get frozen vegetables when I can. Uh, for me right now, it's kind of a challenge to get fresh vegetables because we have stop and shop here in Ghana at the West Hills Mall. But the stop and shop, I'm going to put this pencil down because it's hurting my neck sitting here like this. So what I'm going to do is turn this camera around here so I can talk directly to you here. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, we have a um put these glasses off stop and shop in the West Hills Mall. Most of the supermarkets are inside the mall. And um their vegetables uh ew, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope nobody who owns Stop and Shop is watching this video, but I'm gonna blast put you on blast. Your vegetables stink. <laughs> they look rotten. They smell bad. And I don't want to eat it all the time. Once in a while, I'll get a salad from there. You know, one of those salads that are already made. And, um, you know, it, you know, you eat some of it. Because, like I said, I eat small, small. You eat a little bit of the I think you're going to eat the rest the next day. Uh-uh. The next day, that salad is spoiled. And yeah, so that is not working for me. Um, yeah, so I just, um, just eat small. I, I do eat oats um, occasionally, you know, when I'm feeling in the mood. I buy oat milk. Um, I like the plant-based milk. I don't drink cow's milk. You know, not only because it gives you the bubble gut, but um, it's like cows don't drink human milk, you know. <laughs> so why do we drink cow's milk? You know, it just doesn't make sense to me at all. But plant-based milk, I like a lot, you know. And um, yeah, so that's, but uh, like today on the way coming back home, well, I, actually, I was waiting in the car for someone to do something. Uh, they were doing something. They had to stop at their job and do something. And uh, you would see that in the uh, earlier short video that I posted earlier. Um, 
car chronicles, I call it, because I'm always sitting in the car waiting for someone uh, to go and do what the driver to go and do what he's doing. His name is Quasi, he's my friend. And uh, he has, he's an electrical engineer and he has to stop at sometimes and uh, put in some orders for his clients or whatever and uh, at the electrical company. And um, I'm waiting in the car, waiting in the car, waiting in the car, melting in the sun like a, a chocolate bar. But he went and picked up some uh, cassava yam and what do you call it? Garden egg stew. Oh man, here we go. That was delicious. I found me a new love. Woo wee. That was really delicious. The only thing about when they make some stews here, maybe not all the stews, they use the red palm oil. And I know that that's not good for us, but it was very tasty. And I don't get that very often, once in a blue moon, you know. Um, you know, I do occasionally get some raw coconut, some fresh coconut. Um, sometimes at first thing in the morning, I'll get some. It's inspiring that fresh food isn't more available in Ghana. It is. It it. Uh, surprising that uh, fresh food isn't more available in Ghana. It is available in Ghana. It's just that it's hard for me to get. There's plenty. There's an abundance of, of fresh vegetables. Maybe not all what we used to eating all the time, but there's actually a uh, farmer's market called So Green, S-O-W Green. And they, they are based in Accra and I'm like, I don't know, 30, 40 miles away, I guess. I'm, I'm probably misquoting the distance, but I'm in Coprobite and it's a long drive to Accra to, to um, pick up an order. But you can order food online, you can pick it up or they can deliver it. And I haven't tried it yet. I've been told, don't do the delivery. They're going to bring you garbage. But, you know, you, you can pay in cash when they deliver. And if you don't like the food that they brought, don't pay them. Tell them to take it back, you know. But next month, I'm definitely going to jump all over that. And, um, you know, they charge a little extra to come out of their normal um area from in Accra. Uh, normally, I think for Accra residents, I think they charge like 15 CDs to deliver the food, which is not bad. Um, it's like, what, six CDs to every one US dollar, so you can do the math there. And But to come to Cocrobite, it's like um, 35 CDs. And so it's a little bit more, but you know what? I'll pay it to have some fresh vegetables. The thing is, you know, they expect you to buy a lot of, of vegetables. And if I'm only eating one small meal a day, I can't buy a lot of vegetables. Um, see. Oh, I assumed you were in Accra. Okay, yeah, I'm in Greater Accra. Cocoa Beach is in Greater Accra, but Accra proper is very very far it's very far and it, it's like a two-hour drive from coco Bite on a good day you know we've had days where it's taking us three hours to get there and four hours to get back in heavy traffic and that's eating up a lot of petrol a lot of uh, gas we call it petrol here and um you know, we can't, I can't afford it right now. <laughs> we can't afford it right now. So, but there are shops, you know, along the like roadside shops that sell vegetables. Uh, we have, have like Kasawa Market and Medina Market and other little outdoor markets um, where you can actually go and, and buy your vegetables there. You don't have to just depend on you know, so green to deliver vegetables, we can actually go there. Um, but um, someone, I am mentioning no names, doesn't want me to walk through the markets, the outdoor markets, because 
uh, his reason is that the markets are very dangerous for me to walk through. And I'm um, slightly disabled. I was in a bus accident in the U.S. years and years ago. Um, I walk with a walker and uh, not very fast. And um, he's afraid that someone's going to knock me down and trample upon me or whatever. You know, he doesn't know. Man, shoot. I'm, I'm a tough cookie, you know, I'm a veteran, U.S. Army veteran and a former martial artist. And, uh, but, you know, most Ghanaian people, you know, when they see a woman my age, you know, they can look at my age, look at my hair and see that I'm not a young woman. And um, they're like, no, they think you're a delicate egg. They treat you like a raw egg, you know? And uh, so he doesn't want me walking through the market I sent him to get something in the market and he came back with something else. So I don't want to take a chance in sending him to get, you know, I want to actually see what I'm getting. I want to, you know, um, the experience of shopping. I want to see the food up close and comfortable. You know, I want to see what I'm getting. I want to decide what I want. I want some kale here. I want some cabbage there, some spinach. I want these tomatoes, not that one, this one. You know, I want to pick through my food myself. You know, I'm, I'm used to doing that. I've shot for myself and my children for so many years. I'm used to doing that. And um, I'm turning this table around here because my neck is really, really starting to hurt now from sitting in this position. Yeah, so let me take a sip of this here. Grape juice. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm used to actually shopping. Martial artist, cool. Everybody was kung fu fighting. <laughs> okay, you. Um, very surprised that you remember that song there. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Da -da 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 -da. Those kicks were, those fists were fast as lightning. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit frightening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in the day, I didn't. I didn't take kung fu though. I didn't really like kung fu um, that much. You know, I'm not so much of a, a kick punch person. I'm more of a, I like ninjutsu and uh, basically just you know snap your neck, bang your head, and I'm done. You know, I'm not trying to play a whole lot of games and dancing around and threatening your life or whatever. I just break your neck, break you up in a lot of pieces and, and kick you aside and keep moving. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, over the years I've been studying a little bit, little bit, little bit. And once I got hurt in the accident, I thought that that was it for me, for my martial arts career. And my nephew-in-law, he says, come to my dojo i want to show you something about yourself and i was like hmm. he said bring your walker bring your pocketbook you know i don't think he meant bring your pocketbook in terms of bring money you know <laughs> he basically meant you know i want to show you what you can do to protect yourself so i put on my gi i went to the <laughs> kick you aside and keep it moving. That's right. Um, I put on my gi, the, you know, martial arts outfit, and I uh, went to the dojo. And um, he called me up on the mat and said, bring your walker on the mat and bring your pocketbook up on the mat. And he showed me how to defend myself if somebody tried to take my pocketbook from me. Ah, oh, man. And within five minutes, I was throwing dudes, everybody around the dojo, just throwing them, throwing them, throwing them. Uh, I was like, by the time the class was over and we were going outside, we were going to go to a restaurant and have something to eat because it was a family event that we were having at the dojo that day, too. And we were going to go and eat together. I was in the parking lot. Hey, you, come here grab my purse. 
Come over here. Don't be scared. Come over here. Grab my purse. You bad? Grab my purse. <laughs> my family was like, Granny, if you don't sit down and behave yourself <laughs> and stop trying to lure people to grab your purse, you can't be throwing people on the hard concrete. Now, you know, that's just wrong on so many levels. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. Yes, indeed. But yeah, so um, he, my nephew in law, when he showed me some of these moves, it just brought, it breathed new life into me again. And so I try to practice the moves as much as I can, but I don't have anyone to practice on. My friend won't let me throw him around. I, I told him, I said, I won't throw you on these marble floors in the house. I will throw you around the beach. You land on the sand, you'll be fine. You know, he's like, uh-uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't know. Mm -mm. So I have to find some young person that um, doesn't mind getting thrown around so I can practice on them a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So um, martial arts, it's, uh, it's good, you know, but sometimes you just need more than that. You know, you can't go in the markets and start throwing people around just because they're there. <laughs> it's rude. Um, but I brought that up to say that you know, I've been telling my friend I'm, I'm a lot tougher than I look. You know, I've been thrown around a bit, you know, and I know how to fall. And, uh, and I know how to get back up, you know. So I don't think he's ever seen a woman like me before. You know, um, maybe not here in Ghana. I mean, he doesn't, he's never traveled outside of Ghana. Um, I don't think he was expecting, well, neither of us were expecting to run into each other here. But when I tell him things that I know how to do, he doesn't believe me. You know, like uh, when I first moved to this apartment that I'm in now, the toilet seat was kind of weird and wonky looking. So I, we bought a new toilet seat. And he was gonna install it. I said, no, you go sit down, I can do it. He's like, no, you can't, you can't do it. You're a woman. You <laughs> like, what the hell are you talking about, man? I can do, you know how many toilet seats I've had to install, you know? Uh, I put together furniture, every piece of furniture I've ever bought in my life, I put it together myself. I get the screwdriver and the, a Phillips screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver and all the parts and pieces. I put them in a bowl, all the little screws and nuts and bolts and everything I put in a bowl and I put on some jazz music and get me one of these bottles of juice or whatever and get to it, you know, and uh, put the furniture together. I can do a lot of things. I can paint, you know, when I say paint, I'm not talking about just painting, paintings, pictures. I mean, you know, with the big roller, and paint the room. I can paint a room in about two hours, maybe three hours or so. You know, now maybe I was able to paint it in an hour when I was younger, but maybe it take me two, three hours to paint one room now, you know, with the long roller stick, you know. Um, he's like, no, you can't do it. You can't. I was like, you know what? I don't even like that word can't. I don't like it. Don't tell me what I can't do if you don't really know me. You haven't seen me, and at least give me the opportunity to try before you use that C word. I don't like that word at all. I don't even like telling myself that I can't, not until I've tried and failed, you know? And I mean, tried and failed and tried and failed and tried and failed again. And then I will say, okay, Maybe I can't do this, <laughs> you know, but I don't use that word very often. I roll up my sleeves and make it happen. Come what may, you know. 
So, um, Vasa 5419, um, do you have children? Are you married? Are you single? What do you do, if you don't mind my asking? What are you into? What are your hobbies? Do you like to paint? Do, are you an artist? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I started, like I said before, I started painting when I was about 16, 15, 16. And my mom was able to actually sell some of my paintings, the ones that I told you I did on the black velvet canvas with the uh, neon paint. Well, I didn't always use neon paint. Sometimes I use regular paint, but depending on the colors that you that I used, um, you turn on the black light, it would, colors would pop. But um, yeah, she sold some of my paintings. Then I stopped painting because life happened. You know, I got married, I had children, I lost children, sudden infant death syndrome. My first two children died and they said it was sudden infant death syndrome. And uh, so I was devastated. My husband and I were both devastated, my family and I and my husband were devastated. And then I had some more children who are still alive now. They're in their mid forties now and uh, doing quite well for themselves. And they're, they're still in the US. And, um, you know, but at some point, you know, I went in the military and came out of the military and uh, then I started well, lady, it was lovely to visit with you. I have to leave for an appointment. Hope to catch you painting and dipping, dipping. I know you meant to say sipping. Oh, pain, uh, painting and sipping. Take care. Take care, Vasa5419. I hope to see you again. Thank you so much. So you made it so much e easier for me to do this live. This is actually my first live, and I knew I was going to be talking to myself. <laughs> so I'm wonderful. Um, it was wonderful having you to talk with, and I hope you come back again soon. Peace and love and grand elevation to you. Bye-bye now. Yeah, so, well, I'll continue talking to um, my future audience when, when people actually see this video. Yeah, um, life happened, and I put down the paintbrush and the canvas for some time, and... Uh, Loved it. I, I loved it too. I love you. <laughs> Take care. Yeah, I started actually drumming. I got into African drumming. Um, I've been drumming since I was about three years old. Though. My father was uh, born in Havana, Cuba, and he liked to play his Afro-Cuban jazz albums, and he would play his bongos when he was caring for me while my mother worked. And I was a baby in the crib, like, yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't doing all of that, but I was holding on to the crib bars, bouncing, and, and I really enjoyed it, you know. And um, by the time I was in grade school, I was banging on the desk, like, as if I knew what I was doing, you know, drumming. But apparently, it wasn't all that bad, because as I got older, the rhythm got more intense. The rhythm inside me got more intense, and I got my first drum how old was I when I got my first drum? Oh, I don't remember how old I was. Um, but before I got my first drum, I used to drum on furniture and drum on people's heads and drum on anything, a pillow, my, my, my thighs. You know, anything that had a sound, drum on the couch. I was just drumming. I would daydream. I would zone out and daydream and just start drumming. And um, eventually, when I came out of the military in 19, I come out of the military, 1982, I went in in 78, I came out in 82. Um, I don't know how I got into I don't know how it started. I just found my way. I was acting, actually, and now I know how it started. I, started, I went into um, uh, a theater company. I joined a theater company 
and I started acting. And one of the plays need, uh, that I was in, the director needed a drummer. And I told him, I know how to play the drum. And he was like, really? Hmm. Okay, let's hear you. So I had a beat up conga drum. I, well, I don't know, I bought this conga drum for $5. It had a crack down the side. I actually have a picture of that of me playing that drum at Prospect Park in Brooklyn. I remember that day I went to Prospect Park. I was in my kids were small then, so I had my children already. I'd been married and separated or whatever, and had my children. We went to Prospect Park that day. One of the actresses in the theater company that I was in, she told me about Prospect Park in Brooklyn. Uh, and said that, you know, on Sundays during the summertime, there'd be like hundreds of drummers out there in a circle drumming all day. And you would, people that bake bread would be selling their bread and people that were into martial arts would be out there practicing their, their katas and um, people that painted and drew were out there painting and drawing and, you know, everybody, whatever it, was your thing that's what people were doing and there'd be vendors selling delicious vegan and vegetarian food and um you know so you always had something to eat and somebody making sorrel and ooh sorrel yay you know and uh, selling it and everything so it was just a beautiful beautiful way <clears throat> to spend a sunday afternoon like everybody would start coming out there like about mm, at sometime after 12 noon. And uh, at least I tried to get there early because I, my kids and I were living in the Bronx and Prospect Park is in Brooklyn. That was a long ride, a long ride on the subway train. And, you know, I would bring my own food, food for the kids, pack a little picnic, you know, I, I don't like that term picnic, but, you know, a little sustenance for us, you know, and uh, have my drum, had my drum that particular day. That was our first day going there. And I met her, um, the sister that was an actress, and she brought her children. And uh, she literally, you know, got there. I saw the drummers out there drumming and having a great time. And, and um, I was shy. And I know every time I tell people that I'm shy, they're like, mm-mm. And I'm like, yes, I am. I, I pretend to be an extrovert. Even though I'm an introvert by nature, I have to come out of my shell and pretend to be an extrovert, pretend to be not shy so that people will notice that, I, that I'm alive, that I'm here, you know? I can't just curl up and be in a little shell all the time or else, you know, how they say um, the squeaky door gets the oil or something like that, you know, if you don't squeak and squawk, nobody knows you're there. So I do what I can to try to come out of my shell and not be shy so that I can at least be a part of society. But I was shy that day and she literally took her two hands and pushed me into that circle with my drum because she was like, go ahead, go ahead, go join them. I was like, no, I don't want to. I don't like them. I don't, I don't. Uh, I, she pushed me into the circle. I went, uh, got in the circle at the beat up conga drum. Everybody else's drum was looking nice and different shapes and sizes and everything. And my beat up little conga drum. I had some type of belt around it, you know, to hold it on to me. And I found a little seat or whatever, because at first, when I first started joining that circle, when she pushed me into the circle, you know, the guy drumming, they would, you know, had a nice rhythm. It had a nice little rhythm. And back then, women drummers were not, welcome let's just put it that way we're not welcome in their circle and i didn't know that i don't know if she knew that or not but she pushed me into that circle them drummers they stopped drumming and they were like 
They folded their arms. They looked at me like I was dirt on the bottom of their shoe and was waiting for me to leave so that they could resume playing. So once again, I had to come out of my shell and I, was, I, <clears throat> I actually folded my arms. Let me make sure my top is seen. <clears throat> Excuse me. I folded my arms. I'm like, that's fine. Y'all can go now because I'm here. Bye. And I started playing. Boom, da ka da ka ta goom goom. Boom, da ka da ka ta goom goom. Playing on my drum loud and hard. And then I speed it up. Da da ka da ka ta goom goom. Da da ka da ka ta goom goom. Da da ka da ka ta goom goom. Boom, 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 boom. And the guys were like, hmm. One of them, rest his soul, he's no longer with us. I noticed that at, at uh, Chuck Davis's um, farewell um, when he transitioned and he had a farewell Dance Africa thing that um, the new person that presides over the Dance Africa um, presented. I found out, I saw a picture of him on the wall as one of the ancestors that is now, you know, transitioned. Um, but he was the one that started playing along with me. And he looked at the left and looked right, and he's like, you know, she knows what she's doing. I'm going to just go ahead and join her. I, I came out here to drum. I didn't come out here to be mean to anybody. You know, I guess that's what he was thinking. And he started drumming with me. Then a couple of more drummers joined in with me. And um, we played. Then everybody joined in. We played for six hours straight, nonstop. And I hung in there. My hands started bleeding because I had gotten blisters. You know, I'm beating a conga drum. These guys are playing jazz. Djembe drum skin, the goat skin on a djembe drum is nowhere near as hard as the skin on a, a conga drum. And so, and I'm trying to cut through what they're doing because they've been playing for a hundred years, I guess, you know, and they were playing loud and hard and fast. And I'm trying to cut through them with my beat up little conga drum, which had absolutely no sound to it, but I was cutting through it. And so I developed blisters. They weren't even clear, they were red, they were full of blood. And the, they start, and I just continued playing, and the blisters started popping and bursting, and the blood was dripping down the side of the drum. That was my baptism that day. That was my baptism. And someone in Prospect Park, he's a person, I can't remember his name, forgive me, brother, but he makes jewelry. He makes silver jewelry. He made a silver djembe. And the next time I came to Prospect Park, he presented it to me, a silver djembe drum. And, um, and I put it on a pendant and everything. I still have it today. I'll wear it on my next video so you can see, especially if I'm gonna be playing my drum. I have a drum there in the corner there. But um, that was a proud day. And I've worked with so many different companies Companies I've worked with. Well, the first company I got to work with after that day, and that, that was quite soon after that day, was Calabash Dance Theater. And uh, not the women of the Calabash. That's separate. Um, I know them. I know Yayo Dele Nelson. That, that, that's different. Um, and they're wonderful. Believe me, they're oh, playing that shakari. They, they put a hurt on them shakarade, man. But no, this is Calabash Dance Theater. And, um, you know, they were drummers and dancers. And uh, the director, the artistic director there, when he first got me into the company, he started me off on the bell. And ding, 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 ding. So he's like, okay. Then he uh, he said, okay, that's enough. We know you can play the bell. Try the shakare. 
And uh, like every week he was throwing something new at me. So try to check it out. I played the check with him. He's like, okay, all right. Then he put me on the songba. Songba drum is like a two-headed drum. Um, it's a head on this side, a head on that side, and either uh, some type of either metal barrel or wooden barrel in, you know, in between the two heads that the heads are attached to. And it's played with a, a small mallet, you know, a stick, basically a stick. Yeah, they call it a mallet. Um, doom, 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 doom. Well, that's um, doom, 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 doom. You know, it's, it's a higher sound. Then, and I played that rhythm. I was able to hold the rhythm down, you know, because that's one of the important drums. Those larger drums are more important, actually, because they hold down the beat. And I was able to hold that beat for every song, no matter how fast it went. And then he put me on the Jung Jung, which is a similar shaped drum with the head on both sides, but it's deeper. Boom, 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 boom. So, you know, and I was strong. My arms were strong. I just came out the military. And I had been bodybuilding for some time. I was in bodybuilding competition. I know y'all think I'm lying, but like this woman got delusions of grandeur, but no, I did all of that. You know, you figure, I didn't sit on my thumbs for 67 years. I got busy, you know, I was into everything. And so my arms, my upper body strength was good, you know, and I was able to hold those rhythms down on that jum jum, the songba, the shekere, the bell. And finally, he said, let me see you play the djembe. Play this part. I played that part. They tried me on djembe on another part. He said, I played that part. And he was like, he tried me, I think, on some solos and let me do stuff. And... Any, like I said, everything he threw at me, I caught it and threw it back at him. And he was like, you know what? You're going to play on stage during Dance Africa with us. And I was like, what? <laughs> Woo! Man, but there were some people in that group, some drummers, male drummers, I was the only female drummer that did not appreciate that at all. Dude was like, I've been playing with this company for 10 years and she just got here a few weeks ago and you gonna put her on stage for Dance Africa and not me? And uh, he was like, yeah. <laughs> You want to make some of it, you know? <laughs> I'm the director. What you want to do? You know, boo boo. <laughs> so um, basically what he did, you know, and I did play Dance Africa that year. I can't remember what year that was, but that was like my 15, 15 minutes of fame right there. I felt I was floating on cloud nine. I was so happy and excited to be able to meet Chuck Davis and to be able to play on the stage behind him and with this company, Calabash Dance Theater, I was very proud. And I did well, I did well as far as, because you know, I attended every rehearsal, even if I had to bring the children with me, I attended every rehearsal. I practiced at home. I took everything seriously. What was thrown at me, I took it seriously. And I put my all in all into everything that I had to try to learn. So, um, yeah. The, the brother that didn't like this idea of me playing, you know, the djembe, you know, uh, during Dance Africa when he wasn't chosen to play. Next time he saw me, he punched me dead in my face. He just punched me in my face. I saw a big star, like, you know, like in the cartoons, I saw this big old star, like star, you know. I don't get punched in my face. That was a sucker punch because I wasn't expecting it. You know, he was a comrade. He was one of the members of the company, 
I wasn't expecting him to do that. I didn't even know that he didn't like me, you know, and I don't mean like me, like me, like in romantic, but he didn't like me as a human, period, you know. And um, apparently I found out a lot of brothers didn't like me, you know, um, punched me in my face. And then another occasion I was doing a performance at a Masonic temple of all places, somewhere I think in Brooklyn. And I was, I had a djembe by then, I had a djembe drum and I was sitting in the green room, what they set up as the green room. And I was tuning my djembe with a mallet getting ready to go on stage. I'd been a little bit seasoned by then, you know, I've been playing with that company, playing with other companies and then playing as a solo artist as well and getting gigs to support my children. And um, this brother, he walks past me, you know, dressed nice. He had on the, 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 the Muslim garb and he says, you know, to, you don't touch that drum. You're a woman, you don't touch that. I was like, you talking to me? <laughs> I worked hard and paid cash money for this drum. I'm going to touch the hell out of it. You got a problem with that? You know? <laughs> and oh, I guess he didn't like my attitude. So just about then, they were calling me to come on stage, you know, introducing me. Queen Yeboa, I acquired the name Queen Yeboa, Queen of the African Drum. And... Um, so I'm, I put the drum up on my shoulder. That's my signature way of walking on the stage. Had the drum on my shoulder, holding it by the tail, the head facing back that way. And I'm walking on to the stage, you know, not, not diddy bopping, but just, you know, walking on to the stage, you know, and people are clapping for me and everything. Next thing I know, I'm on the floor of the stage. The drum was rolling this way. My shoes went that way. My earrings went willy nilly somewhere and the man was beating me he was beating me up and then it took six guys to pull him off of me six of them and he insists on beating me to a bloody pulp that same man that was telling me in the green room you're not allowed to touch that drum and I'm like okay I know what I need to do now I'm going to find me a martial arts class and just kind of top off my skills because that should not have happened. That should not have happened. So I started uh, actually studying um, Kupagana and Gumi um, with Mfandishi. Uh, oh boy, forgive me, Mfandishi. I'm trying to remember how to pronounce your entire name. But um, yeah. I was going out to, to New Jersey to study at his dojo there. Kupagana and Gumi is like an, an African warrior system based on the animals, um, movements of animals and everything. And I was doing quite well with that until I got hurt. Um, excuse me. Uh, doing a in practice doing a two man push up. Uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the two man push up. It's like one person is laying on the ground and another person is laying on top of them. And this is not sexual, but you know it's. Uh, let's say if I'm, I'm on the ground, this is how it happened. Actually, I was on the ground laying on my back um, in the dojo, and the person that I was supposed to bench press was laying. We were laying feet to head, feet to head, head to feet. And so his feet were where my head was at. My feet were where his head was at. And I'm supposed to grab his ankles and he grabs my ankles. And as he does a push up, I'm actually doing a bench press and, and raising him up. So, and I, but the guy that they paired with me now, <clears throat> excuse me, let me drink some water, sip. <laughs> I'm five foot one and a quarter inch. And at that time, I wasn't as thin as I am now, but I was kind of thin. And they paired me with this big mountain of a man. I mean, he's like 6'3 and probably 250 pounds or something. 
paired me with him. And I bench pressed him. I did it. I was able to do it. I mean, I've been doing the push-ups on my knuckles and push-ups on my three fingers. And I was, I was keeping up, you know. But when I bench pressed him, something in my belly button popped open, literally. My belly button popped open. I could feel like wind blowing through my belly button. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> what just happened here? Oh, I told the uh, infandicia, I said, I have, I have to go um, home now. I'm going to get dressed and leave. And he says, are you okay? I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Something happened, but I'm, I'm going to go home now. And I took the subway home, and I just didn't feel right. When I got home, I decided I'm going to do some girly things. So I, I like to crochet, and I had a big, big African basket full of crochet um, yarn. And so, you know, I took my little bath and changed into some comfortable clothes and made my little cup of tea and I was getting ready to crochet something and looking for something in that big basket. The basket was like really tall basket. I fell in the basket head first. I fell in the basket and that's all I remember. The next thing I remember was waking up in the hospital. My children must have called the neighbors or somebody called an ambulance and I don't remember any of that. I don't remember riding in the ambulance. I don't remember changing into a gown in the hospital, but I was in a hospital, in a gown, in a room, not even in the emergency room, but in a room. So that means they admitted me and woke up in the hospital wondering, okay, so now how did this happen? What happened here? And I was told that I had a ventral hernia. And uh, they were like, so what were you doing? Oh, nothing. Uh, nothing. I wasn't going to tell them I was bench pressing a 250-pound man. I wasn't going to tell them that. You know, they're like, well, I mean, it had to be some kind of explanation. But I, I, I could barely talk. I was in so much pain. I could barely even talk. So you ask me a question, I'm like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> that's all I could get out. <laughs> So um, I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks. They did surgery um, to close up the hernia, to close up. And um, that was it. You know, after that, I, no more martial arts, you know, for a long, long time until, you know, just maybe four years ago when I told you my nephew-in-law had me come to his dojo and he showed me some moves that don't require a lot of strength. They just require speed. And because I'm a drummer, I have speed in my hands and was able to do the, the um, execute the, the motions very well, very proficiently. So yeah, that's my story. <coughs> but yeah, I am going to leave you guys now. I know this was painting step. I did do, draw some fish on there. Um, because this is my first live and also, this is my first time trying to actually paint and talk and, you know, engage with you on camera. I don't want to mess up my painting and I don't want to mess up my words either, you know. So bear with me. I will be painting more. I will be painting. I don't want to just be painting and ignoring you, you know, um, sis sister, I'm not sure if your sister or brother, Vasa 95419 was so kind, so kind to engage with me and, and have a dialogue with me. And I'm so thankful for that, you know, because otherwise I would have been, well, feeling like I'm talking to myself. I know that you are probably going to be watching this video at some point. Um, let me see. We've been on for an hour and 20 minutes just about. That's that's decent. This is probably like the longest video I've done so far. I'm so glad I was able to do a live. Um, thank you so much for, for joining my um, darts channel, Dynamic Artist Renaissance T-Socials channel. And uh, if what was said here uh, resonates with you in a positive way, please hit the like button. You know, I know I watch YouTube channels too, you know, and 
sometimes I'll sit there and watch the whole thing and I'm like, I forgot to hit the like button. Oh, damn. Let me go back and hit the like button, you know, because I really did like it. You know, but if you like what I'm doing, please hit the like button. And please, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel and share share it, you know, with your family, your friends, your loved ones, or share it with strangers, you know. Um, I love to have subscribers. Um, when you comment in my chat or if you comment in the comment section, I do and I will answer you right away, you know, because I'm constantly checking my channel. I'm always loving Miss M. Oh, MC MC. Hi, MC MC. How are you? Welcome. I was just about to end it, <laughs> but you know, I'll stay on the chat with you if you want to chat a little bit. But yeah, um, I was just saying to people that you know, if you like what, what I'm doing here, you know, please hit the like button, share, and uh, make comments. Comment because I will respond to your comments right away if you comment in the comment section even after this video is, is uh, up, well, not uploaded, it's, it's alive. But yeah, even after you've watched it, and uh, I would just love to hear from you. But the question I asked earlier today, I asked um, Vasa95419 earlier, and I was asking anybody who was willing to answer. We were talking about the prices here in Ghana, because I'm based here in Ghana. I'm from the US, but I'm based here in Ghana now. I've been here since October 26 of 2021. And um, the prices of fuel and food here in Ghana have, have gone bananas. It has skyrocketed. I just came from food shopping earlier today, and it's just so much, you know, it's so. And I only eat like one small meal a day, but man, now I'm going to have to cut that down to one fork full a day, <laughs> you know, because it's just too much. But I wanted to, I was asking people if you wanted to share where you're from uh, in the world and uh, where, where you're hail raining from right now, where you're living right now, and if where you're living have the prices of fuel and food gone up as well. Um, I know some people in the U.S. have told me that some of the shelves in the supermarkets are empty, bare, nothing, no food in the store at all. And so let me know what your situation is there, wherever you are, MCMC. It's good to hear from you. But um, yeah, so Leave it in the comment section because I'm actually going to sign out now. I'm, I'm very tired. I've been on for an hour and 23 minutes now. And uh, I'm going to get ready and chill out right now. It's, um, I don't know what time it is where you are, but here it's 628 in the evening. And I mean, they basically pull in the sidewalks at six o'clock in the evening. Um, but I've been out all day. I've been out in the hot sun all day since nine o'clock this morning, really like 830 this morning and uh, running, running errands, running errands and waiting, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. So I'm, I'm hot. I'm sweaty. I'm tired. I'm going to take a bath and go to bed now. So um, but I will be back on again now that I know I can do lives. I'll be back on again very soon. And uh, some days I will be still uploading some videos and some days I will just pop on and be live. Sometimes it'll be a short live and sometimes it'll be a long one. But anyway, peace and love and grand elevation to all of you who are watching. And there may be people watching that are not commenting or that are not hitting the like button. I can't see where my likes are. Oh, no, zero likes. Uh, that's okay. That's fine. You know, I mean, everybody's not going to like everybody else and everybody's not going to like everything that anybody, everybody says. Um, you know, if you like it, hit, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the like button anyway. <laughs> no. Um, but if you don't like my, my content, I understand, you know, it's, I'm, I'm new to this whole thing. And uh, I'm just trying to find my way 
and share my experiences in Ghana with you uh, as best that I know how, okay? And also sharing my artwork in case you haven't seen the, the paint and sip situation here. This is a, don't, don't, please don't laugh at my makeshift cardboard easel. Uh, it, life is hard, okay? <laughs> it's not easy. So, but this is my painting of a market scene, which I call a market scene, but I've been corrected by a Ghanaian that it's called Sea Shop. So this is my Sea Shop. This is the, the ocean. Well, this is the sky, the ocean, and the sand. These, this is the market woman that's actually selling things. Uh, she's selling avocados. These are going to be some uh, hot peppers. This is cassava yam, um, plum tomatoes, and cabbages. And there's a tree. There's a coconut tree. I haven't drawn the palms yet, but I'm getting there. And there's a woman she's making a purchase. She has a basket in her hand. She's actually pointing to the cassava yams. There are two women talking, an elder woman, elderly woman, and a younger woman with a baby on her back and a basket on her head. And this one's carrying a basket on her arm. And uh, there's a person actually swimming in the water. Well, when I work on this some more, because I work on this painting every day, um, it, it'll look more like a person swimming in the water, I guarantee. There's a lady carrying a baby on her back, and she's got a, ba some kind of basket or bowl on her head. And there's a, um, a couple of lovers, you know, sitting on the beach on a blanket uh, at the shore and watching the fishing boat doing what he's doing. I haven't drawn the fish in the basket or the net or fish in the net yet. But his brother here is selling the fish. Um, you're not probably not going to be able to see that because I did it in pencil. It's very light. But he's got fish in a basket on his head. So this is just my idea of uh, a sea shop market scene. And um, so, yeah, I actually do paint. And I actually do sip. So it's a paint and sip. This is grape juice. It's not what you think. It's just pure grape juice. Oh, you can see my drum in the background. Yeah, I I still like my, my djembe drum, but I wanted to learn how to play the pan logo, the Ghanaian, traditional Ghanaian pan logo drum. And so I'm working on practicing that. In the background there, I don't know if you can see on the wall in the background. Let me see how am I? Ooh, it's awkward to point. Okay, there. That's a mask that I did. I there's two of them actually. If you go on the other side of the wall, there's actually two of them. I made those masks out of cardboard and acrylic paint. And some of these uh this little party, which is what I cut up to use for the the bronze on the masks. And they're actually traditional Ghanaian Ga masks of strength. Ga is one of the cultures of the Ghana. Ghana. And um, yeah, so I, I like the Ga culture and I like the Ga masks of strength. And uh, actually there's a woman, female mask on the left side there. I don't know if you can see, and the male mask. Oh, let me just use the pencil to point. Female mask here, and the male mask there. And um, yeah, so I, I actually, it took me about four days to make the two masks. I actually had a blast doing the masks and everything. So yeah, this is my makeshift studio. I don't know if you can see there. <clears throat> let me see if I can turn this around. Yep, there you go. A makeshift art studio in the corner there, you know, with my supplies and everything. <laughs> makeshift card easel. Um, I'm doing the best I can with what I have to work with for now. So don't laugh. <laughs> don't laugh because, you know, maybe later on down the road I'll be able to afford to get, you know, better equipment and supplies, you know, 
but um, I'm doing the best I can with what I have to work with. If you check out one of my other videos, it has all of my artwork on it. I'm trying to remember which video it was. Um, next time I upload something, I'll attach the video with my artwork on it and you'll see what other kind of art I've done. Um, but the art, keep it's keeping me alive. You know, the drumming, um, the painting, the drawing. I'm also a poet, you know, if you look at some of my older videos from when I was still in the US, I'm sitting in a white um, reclining chair and spitting out some spoken word, uh, you know, I think you might like it. Uh, I've written a couple of short stories, um, you know, which I have on YouTube as well. Check me out. Check me out. I'm an all around artist. I do it, well, I don't do it all. I'm not that good at photography, okay? My brother, he's a professional photographer and he's always, well, you need to get into photography, but that's not my forte, baby. Well, well, why don't you start, if you start playing African drums on the level that I play, <clears throat> then I will take up photography and try to get to your level, okay? <laughs> Until then, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. You know, the, people got to stay in their lane. You know, I got to stay in my lane. I, that Photography is, that's not my lane. You know, I, I mess it up, end up stepping, dropping the camera, stepping all over it or something. I, I'm that's not me. But the things that I'm good at, I do graphic design, computer graphic design. I went to school for that, the Mac Learning Center in Manhattan, in New York, in the U.S. And um, I really enjoy it, you know, and I still do a little graphic design every now and then. So I'm, I'm, I'm writing an autobiography. Well, that's really not art. That's just kind of like, you know, writing down your memoirs and whatever. And I finished it years ago, but now um, that I'm still alive and so much more has happened since I finished that autobiography maybe 15 years ago, so much has happened. I've went on so many vacations. I've gone on cruises for the first time in my life. I've gone on vacation and cruises and met so many new people and got married a couple of times and um, moved to relocated to Ghana, you know? So, <coughs> excuse me, I have so much more to add to it. I know you're thinking I got COVID because I'm coughing so much, but actually I was out most of the day today. And I don't know if you've heard of the Harmattan Harmattan is the dust from the Sahara that blows from, from Africa, even in some parts of the U.S. My cousin told me that when he's in Florida that they even get some of the Harmattan effects in Florida. And it just it's still hanging around because we're just about to enter raining season. But the Harmattan, it came through and it's just not going anywhere. And there's dust everywhere. And when I was waiting in the car for my friend Kwesi to come out of his workplace, the trucks, you know, I'm sitting on the passenger side and the, the driver's side was by the sidewalk and I'm on the street side and the big trucks passing by, you know, most of the roads are dirt roads and they're kicking up dust right down my throat. So that's why I'm coughing so much. No, do I, I do not have COVID. I don't have the cooties. I don't have Kali Molly or anything else that starts with a C. <laughs> you know, I'm just, um, you know, trying to get this dust out of my throat. I actually mixed up a tonic for the first time in a while. I, I realized that I need to do that more often. This tonic, I, I got the recipe somewhere online. Um, and it's basically an immune boosting tonic. Um, what is it? Uh, mm, what is it? It's um, apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, cayenne pepper. Um, I add turmeric and cinnamon and ginger 
as well. And, um, and honey, raw honey. And I mix it up, mix it up good, you know, and adds, you're supposed to add like hot water, but I didn't heat up the water this time. I just added some water, some spring water, bottled water, and shook it up real good. And every day I take a couple of teaspoons full, supposed to, you know, I've just mixed it up for the first time in about six months. I haven't had any, but I know that I need to do that. Uh, yeah, so every couple of, not every couple of days, every day, every day I take a couple of teaspoons <clears throat> full. So, you know, to help boost my immune system. Also, I have a moringa tree growing on my patio outside, which is dark out there. So I can't take you out there right now to show you. My patio light isn't working very well. But um, I take, a, I'll, I'll just snatch off a piece of, a couple of pieces of leaves of the moringa tree and just chew them. Just put them in my mouth and chew them. It's better than chewing aspirins and you know, Western medicine pills or whatever. Um, and uh, I plan on getting a neem, a couple of neem trees, neem, a male and female neem trees, because I understand that when you mix the male and the female neem leaves together, very nutritious. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Good for what ails you too. All right. With that said, Thank you, Vasa95419. I know you had to go about half an hour ago, and I said I was going to sign out, and then uh, MCMC joined. So thank you, MCMC, for joining. Um, shout out to you both. I really appreciate you coming on and making me feel like I'm not talking to myself alone. <laughs> but I'm going to go now and uh, sign out. And until uh, next time. Thank you. And don't forget to hit the like button if you like the content. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share. Okay. Peace out.